Yes. As the title of this video says, I am moving from Godot to Unreal. And I have already too. This change has already started within creating Die and Die, my multiplayer game, which has been my first experience of Unreal. And alongside creating that, I have also created this mood scene of a racing game idea called Rev Resolution and this working prototype of my final college project, which you'll find out more about later in this video. As much as I love Godot and its ease of use and developing Dwarvane and several other games from beginning to end in Godot, in college, I'm making use of Unreal for our projects and I'm also personally loving the tools that are available to use within. Now, that's not me saying Godot is bad by any means or that I'll be not using it anymore. In fact, Godot is what I've used since the start of my game dev journey. Minus Scratch. We don't look that far back. No, no. Building unfinished works of art, such as Zelda knockoff, Wally knockoff, oh, and don't forget the finished ones, Overflow and Dwarven. Its ease of access is unparalleled, but for the gaming industry and for my college studies, Unreal will end up being more beneficial in the long run. Now, the hardest part about switching from Godot to Unreal is the difficulty curve. Trying to understand every single menu in Unreal Engine and what they do is a task in its own self. There are so many, in fact, that I decided to learn them one by one. Following many videos from Ali Elzoiri, I'm butchering that surname, but we'll continue on how to use each in depth and correctly. A common problem I notice is a lack of in depth tutorials showing how to use each section of Unreal one by one. So, after following Ali's videos through, to get a better understanding, I decided to make my first game to put all my practice into use. Of course, an overscope multiplayer game. Not really. It, it, it's still in the works, but it's on hiatus for the moment. The workflow is so different to Godot. You're not connecting nodes with signals and groups, and I often go to repeat what I would usually do in Godot to solve something. Just to realize it doesn't work, but it does at the same time. You begin to realize that the naming conventions in Unreal are slightly differently. So your mindset on what you have to call has to be different to what you think in another engine or in code in general. But the benefit is, of course, you get to use blueprints, which is like a giant jigsaw puzzle, which is beautiful in my opinion. Now, the performance requirement for Unreal Engine versus Godot is insane. Going from being able to code away on Dwarvane on my laptop to my PC crying for help as Unreal boots is a stark change. Now, if you're interested so far in my journey within both Godot and Unreal, do make sure to subscribe and comment down below any game ideas you want me to tackle in future videos because soon I'll be tackling your game ideas on the channel. The benefits so far have been amazing though. Having access to so many assets to work around with for prototyping, the landscape systems and the readily available plugins really help with creating my ideas. The blueprints also, while sometimes looking like hell spaghetti, are also incredibly intuitive. With a bit of learning, I was able to put together Die and I with multiplayer in a decent state within a month. The access to the latest tools, such as Lumen and Nanite, of course, have been a game changer, especially Nanite. I know both of them and their names have been thrown around and performance and a whole lot of other things, but being able to convert a scene that used to run at five frames per second with thousands of objects into one that runs silky smooth at 60 without having to create LODs or any other systems is incredible. The tech is unreal once used properly. Currently, I use a plugin called the Actor Palette, which is one I learned about early on to use an overview of a scene to drag and drop objects into my world. This allows me to build up levels on the fly by using an overview map where I have all the assets on display to drag and drop and use whenever I want. It helps me get an idea of what should go where. Also, multiplayer. Oh, the bane of every developer's existence. In Godot, you have to kind of build it from scratch. Not quite, but also pretty much from scratch. You don't have a lot of built up systems around Godot, such as the Steam plugin that is built into the Unreal Engine. Also, multiplayer. Never has it been easier to create. Thanks to Epic and their built-in systems for it. This allows you to use Steam and their API to host your servers, which makes it a lot easier than poor forwarding to get multiplayer to work. That's why, of course, I decided to make an open world MMO or PG as my dream game. I'm only joking. Uh, I actually decided to make a dungeon expedition dice roll game called Die and Die, which I have a few devlogs on too. If you haven't seen them, go check them out because they're kind of awesome. At least, I think they are. 
The concept of the game name, of course, comes from Dungeons and Dragons, hence the genius name Die and Die. But mechanically, the game is going to be simple minus multiplayer. You roll a dice, it garners your stats, and you run through a procedural dungeon, fighting enemies for currency to then upgrade your dice and gear. I still think this will be a fun game to continue working on once I have the time, but for the moment, I have it on pause as I work on other projects. Within college, I've also been studying Unreal in detail and using it to bring my big group ideas to life, such as the game Rev Resolution, which was a concept of a group of classmates and I which we came up with. The game was a street racer with the ability to upgrade your car from a 2D sprite all the way up to a high quality 3D model. And instead of a drift boost mechanic, there would be an ability to slow down time if you didn't hit another car while it's active, which if you did would punish you and slow down your time and they would be able to race ahead. For my finals now, which are way far out, I'll also be using Unreal to create a game, which I'll go into future detail on down the line, but here's a snippet of the prototype concept. I am also studying how to document my games as I create them, so if you have any ideas of a game you want me to make within 48 hours, comment it down below because I'm going to document and create games that you give me ideas for. Well, as I improve my skills and ability to use Unreal of course, I'll be working on smaller projects, mini game jam size ones to be exact, with the help of suggestions of you in the Discord which you can find below. I'll try to create a variety of different games over the coming months to get a better understanding of the engine itself. I want you to be a part of my journey as I evolve as a college student who initially dreamed of creating games to now pushing for that dream. Alongside the creation of these games, ideas by you, I'll also be releasing to Warfane on Steam with extra cosmetics too. While all of this is happening, I'll also be working on college game projects, which I'll showcase the development journey of. I was also considering a tier list videos and also videos discussing the documentation side of game development, but I have no idea if any of you are interested. Just let me know if you are, and we might see a few of them crop up. As I can showcase my journey through learning the documentation and also my personal interests on games I want to create. Now, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching, as you are what makes this all possible. The feedback and support, especially on the latest video, has been incredible, as always. And if you have enjoyed, let me know below, and I will see you all next week with another video.